We'd like to sincerely thank our Patreon supporters. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is a beautiful, I don't know what day it is, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday afternoon. And we've already somewhat covered this in another video. We were catching minnows to feed the monitors and crawfish. And we stopped on the side of the road and we found tomato plants, Probably it was a busy road where a lot of farm trucks would take the corner and I think they were losing fruit and vegetables. Yeah. And I say fruit because tomato is a fruit. I have a hard time processing that. It's not a fruit to me. Technically. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but corn, sunflowers, squash, tomatoes was all on the side of the road right there. I feel like there was one more. There probably was. There was yeah, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> there probably was. Um, but so I'm over there catching minnows and she's digging plants out of the ground. There was dozens of plants. You could have started your own garden literally just off the plants that were already established on the side of the road there. Yeah. So tell us what you're doing right now because I would go straight to putting these in the ground so, and hoping for the best. This guy first needs to be rehydrated. He just survived the ride home. But the first thing we want to do is pluck off any flowers that it may have and the fruit. So this plant needs to focus all of its energy into getting back to being established. It doesn't need to be putting any, any energy into producing fruit or trying to flower. But wouldn't that one tomato be really good? So again, the plant would just focus on getting this tomato ripe and the seeds ready to go, ready to go into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't that, focus that's on That's the difference that. between somebody who knows and me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to let them rehydrate. You know, their leaves are a little wilty right now, but they'll perk back up. What about that then... big tomato over there? Oh, you mean the squash? <laughs> so it's going to be the same thing. We're going to... Uh, it's prickly. It is prickly. We're going to remove that from the plant. And so will that ripen? Eh, it might. If you will let it, we if be you able to out. identify it through? Well, I would it's need not to, full size. I would need to cut into it and look at the seeds. But All so right. notoriously squash. So does by not... the end of the video, we're going to base all her knowledge on if she can decide what that is. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so notoriously squash, pumpkins, zucchini, um, melons they don't transplant well so it's kind of a gamble seeing whether or not this is actually going to establish or not we're, wow, we're gonna cross our fingers great. it already does have a little bit of powdery mildew on it which you know squash does really well in georgia but i have read online that it kind of struggles a little bit in florida because of the higher humidity here promotes more powdery so those mildew. spots mm -hmm. the white spots is powdery mildew I've got spots. I'm doing fine. <laughs> no wrong with some freckles. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put these, since we have nothing really invested in these plants, we're finally going to do the experiment. And now we don't have tomato cages with us yet, but we do have some animals that we know don't climb all over their plants. So we can pick enclosures. Um, with those animals to put these in and get them started. I could probably get the tomato cages in the next day or so. I have to make an appointment to get them from the other house. So we'll see how that works. I do have a mess of them over there. But she also discussed putting, now I don't want to pressure her to put her figs in the ground if she really doesn't want to. Um, but because these are all sentimental fig plants, like, like you said in a past video, they are so they are actually a line of fig tree that's been in my family for about 35 to 40 years. Um, that long ago, my grandfather had gifted my grandmother a fig tree as a Valentine's gift. She planted it in the ground where we used to live. And every time that we moved, my grandfather would take a cutting of that tree and then transplant it to the new property. So it's something that has always just been in the family. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep one out well show us what's really cool about these oh so when we brought these plants down has it has it only been a week 
I'm trying to find a branch that was a good example. Maybe they had like three of these little they didn't have any leaves or the buds leading to those. I can't really show you, but in this very short amount of time, they're covered in leaves and there's figs on them already. There's figs. <laughs> so that one's mine. That one's mine. <laughs> any for you? Uh, you can have them. That one's mine. <laughs> and that one's mine. It's all on film. We have, we have proof that I claimed at least all of those. Um, I'm really excited about our sandy area and getting some citrus in there started. So I would love to get this lemon tree in the ground. He needs um, a little water, but I think this is a Clemson spineless okra. Okra? Yep. I like okra. But where, where would we put okra at? That's okay. a garden, garden plant. Yep. So, it out. Uh, I didn't think we were ready for the garden garden yet. <laughs> do I have to add that to the list? Um, I do know that our lemon tree over here, which is fighting for sunlight, it's really a shame. Um, I can trim back these oak trees a little bit and wring that palm so it gets a little more sunlight. But there is fruit growing on it, but you have to really, there we go. There's one right there. You really have to strain your eyes to find it. But there are lemons growing all over it. I see another one on another branch um, that I don't think I can get you guys up to. Um, there's another one way up there. Yeah, you can't see that. And my arm's not 12 foot long, so I can't zoom to it. But um, it's a shame because it's a great tree, but it's not in a great location. Do you want to walk them by the mulberry tree? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my favorite activity, it's, uh, it's been a huge distraction working because um, I think about this tree every day um, is my mulberry tree. Um, it's been some years since I had a good one. I was growing one at the other property and uh, it seemed like either the kids or the birds would get all the mulberries before I could get to it. But this tree every afternoon i swear we sit underneath this tree for i don't know if we're we're showing you how many um those are lots of the green ones and red ones the ripe mulberries i mean they're every square inch of this tree is is just solid uh I'm trying to find a really good branch for you guys to see but the the darker purple ones are the ones you want. So there's tons of them are still white. So it's gonna continually fruit. Uh, maybe you guys can see in here. The, the, all the black ones, the dark, dark purple mulberries. They're just everywhere. You just have to sit there and look at the tree. Yeah, so, so I'm holding the camera and Kagan is over there scarfing down mulberries. <laughs> She's, she's totally cheating. That's all right. I snuck over here yesterday and ate for about 10 minutes before she caught me. <laughs> so we have to go start getting some of these plants in the ground by the enclosures. But Kagan did, did me a favor and did water yesterday. And she did what I've done many times in the past. <laughs> and she left one of the water valves on and not only flooded the enclosure, maybe the two or three enclosures next to it, but also quite a bit of water in the hallway. So uh, she's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, you don't need to apologize. I've done it <laughs> way too many times. You just, there's so many things to do. You can get distracted and just forget. Um, so we do need that water to dissipate just a little bit. We're gonna select which cages are good. Oh, shoot. We also have, the sausage tree to we put in do the ground. We have a sausage tree. And yeah. we have some variegated cactus for future tortoises right, that Kenan gave, gave us. us. Yep. So we could probably start those out by the fence line maybe. Yeah. Or our sandy area, which I really don't like the look of cactuses on a property, but we'll select a good location and we'll get some of these plants in the ground. Oh yeah. And did I just say sausage tree? Yeah. I did. You did. Can I say that again? No. Yep. If you guys have ever seen a sausage tree, now it says you can eat the fruit, that it's poisonous before cooked, that it's used for making some sort of uh, helping the fermentation process and making some alcohol in Africa. 
Um, for me, it's an ornamental tree, but it's just cool to see a tree. It's a pretty tree and it has these massive sausages hanging down from it. And uh, you could uh, you could beat your children with the, the sausages if you <laughs> I mean, they look like baseball bats. So they're... Not that I beat kids with baseball bats. I'm not saying any of that. Can erase all that. Anyways, so we're gonna we're gonna start getting some of these plants in the ground. The plants in the ground, blah blah blah. All right, so we're about to go in and see something that Kagan wants to show us. But um, before we do that, I want to show you my gardening skills. That is a pineapple about to happen. Pretty cool. You can see it actually has like purple flowers shooting out for it um, at the base of it. Um, all of the plants, all of the pineapple plants in the next coming months will start shooting pineapples out of the center. I wish I could find another one, but uh, it comes out of nowhere. Like they'll have nothing coming out the center and then before you know it, boom, there's, there's just pineapples shooting up. I think my mom said last count 20 or 30 of them are popping out of her plants at her house uh, at the same time these guys these little black and yellow grasshoppers that are crawling out of the ground in droves on my property are those giant yellow locusts which eat all your soft plants there was quite a few of them around the house yesterday or last year and um Looks like they're going to have a strong year next year because there's babies everywhere. All right, so we're walking onto the front porch. If you guys remember me building this shelf unit to use temporarily in the house, um, we brought it out here. I don't think it necessarily does everything that Kagan wants it to do. Um, she's showing off. For plant fans out there, that's a Monstera Albo. There's philodendron there, peperomia, hoya. Before we go further, so she wants me to build a oh, two-tier shelf unit so she could get more plants into the sunlight. And I think I will build some small cabinetry on the bottom. So maybe start the lower shelf right about here with a small cabinet underneath it and then the plants going up and we could store all of our seed packets, small pots, starting trays, um, reptile supplies. We could use all of that underneath the shelving as storage because you can never have enough storage. And this shelf unit will then move to the bar area for displaying something. But now we're gonna go back to her, what is it? Is this like an angel wing or something yep, like that? that's an angel wing begonia. Um, there's Thai constellation monstera that gets this really awesome variegation on it. I've got a ton of those. There's plants on top of the Halmahera geckos behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Coconuts. Coconuts. Palm tree seeds. These nuts come off of, uh, uh, what was the name of that palm tree? Uh, I know it because I told it to you. It's, uh, uh, that's a brain fart. I have no idea. We'll go back to her plant tour. What's this guy? Because I like this guy. That is a uh, ring of fire philodendron. Really cool. Yeah, he's got lots of really fun variegation on him. The one in the back actually has even better variegation. It's kind of neat. But the main reason I wanted to bring you over here was because, and I'm not even done with this yet, but I started, I think it's 502 vegetable plants the other day. Just, just a few. She told me 503 the other day. Oh. So which one is it? 502. 502. <laughs> oh wait, no, 504. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's awesome. So what do we, uh, you don't have to name everything because I see a lot of plant tags. Yep. What do we roughly have? So there's roughly 72 plus tomatoes. Different varieties? Yep, different varieties, uh, different types of peppers. We're focusing on poblanos and bell peppers. Mm. I was also really interested to try planting the same variety of pepper just from different places 
because if you have one seed company that's based in this state, another seed company that's based in another, those seeds might react differently to this area than they would in others. So I'm kind of just, just out of my own curiosity. So in growing, because I mean, like truth be told, like I would probably go to Home Depot or some plant center and buy whatever tomato looked the prettiest on the plant card mm -hmm. and be like, oh, that's the kind of tomato I want to grow. Mm -hmm. but, but you are going to grow a spectrum of the same plant and actually keep your tags on it. See, that's another thing that I would probably lose my plant tags. <laughs> You're going to keep your plant tags on it. Yes. Keep track. Keep notes, because I know you keep notes on everything. <laughs> yes. And then not waste time next year growing the things that weren't successful here, and right. then keep track of what was. Mm -hmm. Now, the other night, or other week, last Sunday, we went to the farmer's market, mm -hmm. and we got some poblanos, uh, yes. a red and a green, Yep. Uh, which apparently were the same, same thing. different, you know, one was ma more mature. And uh, I made some scrambled eggs with the uh, roasted poblanos, and she like, that's really good. That has really good flavor. It wasn't spicy. So of course she like got the seeds out of it. It's planted. Yeah, it's this back row right here. So what'd you name it? Uh, so it is Poblano Pepper Local Green Market. My name's not on it at all. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> we could name them. Oh, Jerry Poblanos. <laughs> so the fun thing about those is because they were grown locally in Florida, I have a feeling that those poblano peppers are going to do better than the other varieties that I have planted because that plant is more used to the Florida weather than the others. Don't be fooled by a green market. A oh, lot. it might come in from somewhere yeah, else? Yeah, it could okay. have, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to find out, Could have right? rode overnight from somewhere else just to make it there for Sunday. Um, so another fun thing is I really enjoy yellow and orange tomatoes because they have a lower acidity than red tomatoes. So oh. for those people that might get a little upsetty spaghetti tummy at red tomatoes. Well, I don't call it that, but yeah, it does. <laughs> I don't call it that, but it, yeah, red sauce has started to bother me a little yeah, bit. So these yellow tomatoes are going to have much less impact on upset stomachs. I think that I, because I don't have the same stress levels in my life anymore, <laughs> that I won't be as bothered by acidic things. Yeah. But um definitely acidic things even orange juice compounded with stress it'll do a number on your stomach so but i'm not going to call it upsetty spaghetti <laughs> i refuse so we got beans we got peas we got squash um lots of bell peppers and then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to be planting um some basil basil is a really great companion plant for these types of plants because they will draw bad insects to them and deter them from messing with the, the vegetable plants that we don't want them on. It will also, the basil specifically puts a smell in the air that confuses those insects and then they don't know which way to go to get yeah. to, the, to the tomato plants and other plants that they would predate on. Um, but I'm also going to be doing uh, lots of um, flowers that are going to bring in beneficial insects. Um, bees, pollinators, butterflies, those kinds of things that would draw them to the area. Okay. Smart. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm excited for all this stuff to start happening. Um, there's going to be a lot of work. Um, uh, yeah. So the, the plated lizard is in here, and I'm looking. The, the soft plants that you put in there, it looks like they've taken off, and they're growing in the sand? Yeah, I mean, they seem... They it's, just they're, need. They're have you been? Up. Have you moist, wet them down a little bit? No. So I have. Plated lizard is in the. Oh, look at! I'm looking at the camera. It's all glare. But there is a brown anole that found himself in the enclosure. Is sitting on top of the rock, a male brown anole, and he's living in there. And for those that might be worried, that is not a heat rock that is plugged in. The cord has been cut off. And oh I, wait a second! There are two brown anoles in there. Yeah, they've managed to find their way in. How the heck? I don't know. I don't know. That's a, that's a sausage party. <laughs> Speaking of, let's go plant our sausage tree. <laughs> oh, good transition. <laughs> All right, so I walked over and I'm looking at Kagan like, come on, you're gonna put this stinking lemon tree in the ground? And she's looking at me. She's like, you gonna record? Yeah. I forgot what I was doing. I guess we're filming today. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason that I wanted to get this tree a little bit pruned before we put it in the ground is because 
the way the branches are right now, they're very intertwined and crisscrossed. And when it comes to letting the plant grow out, you want each branch to be very easily accessible with the fruit. You don't want branches that are gonna be all, you know, intertwined with each other to the, to the point where you're gonna snag yourself a little bit. So I was just gonna come in and clean it up in a few spots. And the fun thing is, is I'll also be able to take these and propagate them. What? Yeah. That one's dead actually, but. That one's got thorns, don't just leave it there. No. It'll, it'll be in my bare foot. <laughs> so. Citrus tree branches that fall down, they're just a magnet for your feet. Your feet will find every little one. That and uh, I don't know if anyone else is uh, familiar with uh, bougainvillea. Um, it can grow as a bush, almost kind of like a tree, or it can vine on stuff. And it, and it has all these, uh, I mean, it could be yellow to purple to red flowers, um, extremely thorny. I know uh, a lot of friends that will plant them outside of their daughter's bedroom window because of all the thorns. Best shears in the world. What? Not right. user error? So there we go. Now he's just a little cleaner. Each branch, now when it fruits, isn't going to be competing with another branch and getting in the way. And that looks a lot nicer. Excellent. Let's get it in the ground. Get it in the ground. Now it looked super sandy here. This is that same bank that the turtles were laying in. But as soon as you break through the ground, it's that Okeechobee dirt that if I could get some water added to this, it'll probably be jet black. It's just sand on the surface. So, don't need to do it a whole lot, but I'm going to tease the roots just a tiny bit to get them to open up. need to add more dirt to the bottom of that hole. Is that too low? Uh, I would say. Yeah, a little bit. I'm liking that better. Yeah. Still more? Huh. I like it to be level. But you know what? It's, there is a little root exposed, so I think that's yeah. actually a little short itself. Oh, look. There's another one of these dudes on this. Oh, look at this. Yeah. That's the second one I found on here. Scary looking caterpillar. It is. I'm sure it doesn't sting at all. <laughs> Maybe we're going to look a little more thorough. I guess I should be careful how I'm grabbing the leaves, because... If that's a stinging type of caterpillar. Could be real fun. So, oh shoot, I don't think we filmed the last thing. We put a butterfly tree of sorts in the ground. Um, we're just gonna go around and get everything in the ground and then we're gonna set up to water. Yep. My watering system that I would normally have for my golf cart is still at the other house. So we're just gonna rig something and uh, I'll show you guys what I properly have set up because when you have a larger piece of property and you're putting plants in the ground that need to be regularly watered mm -hmm. almost daily initially for a period while it gets established i yeah. would say two weeks would you say that much or longer i would water it once every two days for the first couple of weeks yeah yeah and then so that sounds right off from there um well and we're going to be coming into the rainy season so i mean the the stress of watering things will be over in fact it seemed like a rainstorm was coming through today but now it almost rained and now it's yeah. just blazing hot and sunny. So you're worried about roots and grass and stuff? I'm going to try in and get some of the grass away from it. All I don't right. like burying live plant matter because that's just stuff that can come back and either tangle up the roots of this plant if it survives and then if it dies it could be uh, something that decays around the base of the plant. I thought that's what they wanted. Isn't that what soil is made out of? <laughs> yeah, but it's already decayed. Yeah. Alright, so just don't pay attention to what's in the ground on my side. <laughs> you do your side. Okay. We'll see what side of the plant does, does better. better. <laughs> <laughs>
It all goes in on my side. Am I a bad, bad person for not listening? I guess that's for her. That's for her. To, yeah, that's for her to decide. All right. So we're gonna, she's going to compress the dirt down a little bit, but the water is going to do that when we come around and water everything in. So we have everything else in the back of the golf cart. We're going to keep going around, get all these in the ground. And uh, obviously we still have the stuff in the cages after this as well. All right, so we just got the sausage plant, sausage tree planted, and Jerry cut up some radiator hose. Old radiator hose. Well, it's actually not all that old, just for a project that I'm no longer doing. And because I run the riding lawnmower past these trees, now this is not gonna save the tree necessarily from a riding lawnmower, but I also weed whack around the trees that, you know, the trees are getting all their nutrients up from the bark and just below the bark. And if the weed whacker takes out the bark, I don't know how hard this tree is. Like an oak tree, mm -hmm. you can hit it with the weed whacker, it's fine. But I have stressed my star fruit tree. It was blooming like crazy. Since you saw it last, you could tell the tree is, mm -hmm. is stressed. The mm -hmm. lawnmower hit it on one side of it and taking out one half of the bark, that whole tree is like... Struggling now. It's in a bad way. Yeah. Because I didn't do this. And if I would have just wrapped the tree, put a zip tie around it. Now, it doesn't have to be like crazy tight because I'm gonna have to cut that zip tie at some certain point to allow the tree to grow. Actually, it'll just break the zip tie quickly. Um, that's gonna stop me from hurting the tree when I run by. And later, all of the trees that are in the same area as tortoises and some of the other animals, we're gonna have other ways that we're gonna have to protect all the young trees. Mm -hmm. But this is to protect them from me. The, <laughs> the worst, most destructive animal of all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so for the plants back here, we realized that the hose from the enclosures actually reaches out here. So the sausage tree is there and watered in, and we got all three fig trees in a row back here. Um, they needed about 12 to 15 feet in between them. Um, I lost Kagan, she's running back over. Her and the dogs are trying to communicate to the hamburgers on the other side of the fence. They, uh, I just totally lost all my helpers. So I don't know if I did everything right. Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah. I if, didn't leave if you guys could see, myself. there's about a hundred hamburgers. Oh, look at that Brahma bull. What a handsome bull. That's who's making all that noise. Mm -mm, I don't know. The if... white one with the horns in front. Oh. The one that's kicking up all the dust? That was him honking. So maybe the bulls are having a little thing. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all over here. And then they, they keep all these donkeys. These donkeys will keep the coyotes away from the young calves. I don't see any calves in this herd. Maybe they've already been pulled. Oh, is that a young calf over there? Yep. There's yeah, one. they're not that young anymore. I think they're... They're beyond coyotes right now, but that's, the donkeys are actually quite alert seeing the dogs on the other side of the fence. But that's what they're there for. They'll, they'll grab a coyote by the back of his neck and sling him around. Um, so do you like or dislike the mud dam for the period of time that you water to help yeah. get any air off the roots? I it's do. something I've always done, but again, you over there talking to the hamburgers, so. <laughs> I, 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 I just that I was over here when you did the first one. Oh, okay. I didn't notice. <laughs> but uh, we've got them all watered in. She wanted them leaning a little bit into the yard uh, a little more to get the sun and away from this swale. This swale can hold water in the rainy season, but it's never on those roots more than like a day. Mm -hmm. Um so now we're gonna move on to what else do we have in the back we got our lemon in I think that's sausage it. tree we're gonna plant the cactus in pots and yeah we're gonna start the cactus leaves that we got from uh petals cactus petals that we got from kennan's the variegated cactus that's not a very good example that's a much better example we'll get those started in pots because when they're this small 
I'm not even going to notice them if I run them over at the lawnmower. We need them uh, just a couple high. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I guess we need to put some uh, radiator hose just a little bit on these um, as weed whacker protection. The, the berms actually are a very good jerry deterrent. Also, if you notice on my avocado tree, I actually don't run close to it. I stay mm -hmm. around that perimeter is, is, is how I ride around it with the lawnmower. I don't try to cut it close because that berm is there. Yeah. So, um, so the next thing is the soft plants. So we're gonna drive the golf cart up front and we're gonna look for cages where we don't think that the monitor is gonna trample the plants. We have some of the shy water monitors on the end. The drywall, dry, or the hallway has already dried out. So I'm thinking, again, not a permanent enclosure for this monitor, mm -hmm. but this female white throat might be a good one. Mm -hmm. Frosty, no. These young ones, maybe. Um, the male black dragon might be a good one. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like he's out all that much. Mm -hmm. I think a plant would have a great opportunity to grow in there. Um, so we'll pick them and uh, and we'll try and get these guys in the ground. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I just thought I should also mention this. We were walking by and uh, you remember we had the food cart with the um, all the rabbit feed and turkey feed and all that in it. Well, we had something chewing in and oh, there's some chews on that pot. This must be the one chewed all around here, all around there. So we were like, maybe in the shop. I was like, I don't want to attract rodents into the shop and I'm not ready to jump off of other projects and do that cart. So we just put all the food in the, the cages that are empty in the back of my row of cages. So all the food is safe until we build something more proper. So that'll happen soon. Now we'll be back to the plants. All right, uh, if you see stuff splattered on my face, I just chopped up a whole bunch of tilapia to feed the, um, the monitors and I got it splattered all over me. And then Kagan was trying to get some of it out of my face and my hair. And so. <laughs> <laughs> it's stinky. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, the wild tilapia guts are just absolutely disgusting. So I think this is a good cage to show a tomato plant and I really think the uh, the male black dragons another good example but you know this is out of the way of the doorway um, we'll flip the water tub over when it's dirty then it gets all the ground wet that's why the ground is wet right now um, so they're gonna get watered it has the fence to support we can tie it this animal does not bulldoze everything it's not permanent but what we're doing right now is we're experimenting with plants that we have zero investment in. Literally, she dug them up on the side of the road. <laughs> so, I mean, how perfect can that be? Um, and this one, there is a tomato and a squash. The squash is Oh, there. okay. So this one has a squash. Now, is the squash going to vine up or we don't know? We don't know yet. It we might don't... actually be a pumpkin. It might be a melon. So it could just be ground cover, which would be great in yeah. here. Um, so I guess we'll see. I mean, being well. where it's at might push it out. And we got the tomato right there. I see a weed and I'm gonna pull. And I'll just leave it there. There's, there's some of the cut up tilapia in the tray. Um, they should love it. The ones that were still awake gobbled it up. Um, where's the one where you use the stump? So. Uh, I, this one right here, the male black dragon used the stump oh. to really... Oh, I did really... that one too. I did. I did. <laughs> oh, okay. So there is... Now... That one's probably Kagan, going to flop. Yeah, you already said that you don't think that this squash is... Even though it looked beautiful on the ground, this is the one that had the the fruit on it. Yeah. So squash of fruit? Mm, that's a vegetable. All right. All right. <laughs> well, good. I thought it was a vegetable. Um, so, had the vegetable on it that we removed earlier. So a plant being that big already, it was gonna struggle some being dug up, having that big fruit. And it was covered covered in flowers it. that it was. Now we'll the see. other one that was super small and compact, I should have grabbed more of those. Yeah. Um, and then this tomato, I planted it close to the stump so that maybe it could use the stump as support. The animal might not be inclined to run over it in that area. 
well, I think it looks kind of cool. He spends most there. of his time right there. So in his hide box. And I think we're two weeks away from removing the flaps and we're gonna start seeing a lot more of these animals. So that'll be exciting. Start seeing some of these run and hide lizards. And you guys are starting to think that I own a bunch of empty cages. <laughs> and we have, I mean, we you literally have a tomato plant in just, just about every enclosure. The first six on the this first row, six on this side. And then the first one on that one. So the tomato right there by its log going up and we don't even know I guess I should get closer we don't even know what kind of tomato it is um, we saw a small one on it but we're and are assuming that it's a cherry tomato but we don't thoroughly know the shape makes me either think Roma or cherry tomato all right well exciting stuff we've got vegetable plants growing in the monitor enclosures and uh there's no more surprise plants really right look she's going behind me and putting the latches on all the cages what would i do without her <laughs> <laughs> unless we stop on the side of the road tomorrow and find more so to finish we only have to water the lemon and the uh that one uh, butterfly bush that we put in and i think that's it Everything back here, we, we already reached with the hose, the figs, and the sausage tree, which should be a really cool tree. It'll fill that area and give us a little sunshade, a little wind barrier, um, something that we need in that space. We really do need trees in all these spaces. Um, and I really need a wind barrier on along the fence line to protect these trees, really. We don't want our precious trees to be damaged in a storm we want sacrificial things like bamboo or something along those lines mm -hmm. so that's something else to figure out but uh we're gonna go eat some mulberries <laughs> I, I think that's all for this one all right guys until, until next, next time, time. <laughs> thanks for watching everyone please don't forget to like comment share subscribe and ring the notification bell see you soon